Welcome to Ready to Call Podcast. I'm your host, Al Martinez, also known as Alpha Mike. You are listening to episode 311. Today's episode, it's easy. What's all the noise about? It's that simple. What are we talking about? An election. An election in a field that has nothing to do with politics, but you gotta be elected to be there. It's gonna be a good one. It's a lot of dirt in this one. It's gonna get ugly. But before we get to there, always getting little messages about what guns do you have? Well, here's some of them. Well, here's one. It's empty, okay? Look. Look, safe, clear, and empty. Look. Oh, my God. He's pointing it everywhere. I don't know why they do that on videos. Like if you're going to shoot the screen or something. But here we are featuring Glock 27 40 caliber. Known as the Baby Glock. See how small it is? Here it is. All right, so we're living on the desk in case anything goes down. And we have a plenty amount of show notes. We got a lot of big topics here, the show notes. For you. Hey, what, what, what is this going to talk about? There it is, here are the show notes. For today's episode, what is all the noise about? But before we get to that, we're going to talk about our intro, we always talk about media issues. And it's a lot of talk from the time of this podcast. Will the Democrats push Uncle Joe over the bridge? Is that, he even said it, I'm not as good as I used to be. I don't talk as good as I used to be. That's why. You're no good. But as Uncle Joe continues to prove the point each and every day, Americans are still wondering, when the hell are you leaving? But as we wait for that, we'll look into some other things. And one thing that we're going to talk about is November 5th, 2024. The day of visibility for Christian voters because we have a lot of things to vote upon and not only the presidential election, which is important, but a lot of local elections, state representatives, state senators, federal congressmen, Congress people, senators, president of the United States, and Today's subject, sheriff. That's right, sheriff and judges are elected positions in many areas. And as constitutional officers, the sheriff is elected in the state of Florida. It's an awkward position to be in, to be a sheriff, and having to act like a politician. You see, the reason Miami-Dade, and we're specifically talking about Miami-Dade, for those people that are not from Miami, it's going to be fantasizing, important podcasts, because you're going to understand how the Banana Republic actually works. But maybe in your area you have to elect a sheriff also. But imagine a police department that calls itself the Miami-Dade Sheriff's Office and the badge, it says Sheriff's Office. IDs, they say Sheriff's Office, but no sheriff was ever elected. Actuality, 
to an appointed director. That person is told, sit in that seat. You're going to be in charge for the day-to-day -day operation. You see, the ultimate authority is the mayor of the county. A civilian never cracked an egg, never put on a gun belt, never took off a gun belt. <laughs> For those of you that have done it in an emergency bathroom one, you know what I'm talking about. And here they are now, changing the way it is. To the disgust of many Banana Republic politicians in Miami-Dade, they try to throw a monkey wrench at the operation and downsize the meaning of a sheriff. It didn't work. The state of Florida got very upset. Florida Sheriff's Association sued to ensure that what was in the Constitution of Florida would be followed by the Banana Republic of Miami-Dade. And I know there are a lot of people that are down there in Miami totally insulted by what I'm saying. But you see, I used to be a part of the Banana Republic. I worked for the Banana Republic for 27 years. I know how it exists. I know how it runs. I know how it thinks. And it's a Banana Republic. We're going to talk about that much more, but let's not get ahead of each ourselves. I'm, I'm eager to get into this, but we have to wait. November 5th is very important. You have to do your due diligence. You have to look up these people that are running in your areas. Who are they? Who are they affiliated with? For this sheriff race, I've plugged in a lot of people, and I've come up with a whole lot of skeletons. Now I know who I'm, I'm not voting for, so I know who I'm voting for, which is nobody, because I don't live down there no more. I live in God's country, I'm in Tampa Bay. I moved away, fast as my feet could take me. But I did do my due diligence to see who 17 of these people are. I know who they are. I know a lot of things in what direction we're supposed to go, and we're going to talk about that much more. November 5th, how important is your vote? Very important. If you sit back in this election and you think, oh, it's just one vote, uh, you know, I'm not going to go, then you're messing things up for the rest of us because every single vote matters. Even if... A lot of Republicans win by landslides. We need to prove the point and drive it home. The communism, socialism, and stupidity will not be tolerated in the United States of America. It's important. Get out, do your vote, and do it with your heart and soul, whatever you believe. You believe Joe Biden is America's future? You know, the kid from Scranton. Now go ahead and vote for him. But if you're like the majority of Americans that said, what in the hell is that? You know, you can't vote for him. But we'll leave that up to you November 5th. And it's important. Your vote does count. Also on our website, we're continuing. That is Raider Cop Tack. TAC.com. There's a section on there. All right, here we go. Episode 311. What's all the noise about? And we're going to dive into Miami Dade Sheriff's Office race. And it's a doozy. So let's start off with the history. I did say that the agency is 188 years old. So if we look at the history, it let me let me let me punch it up in the computer before I start rambling, and Joey Bag of Donuts starts correcting me. That's not true. That's not true. You don't even know what you're talking about. 
All right, so here we go. And we're going to also talk about how many clowns are in the circus running as well. So it started 1836. Now, if you do your math, 1836, and you subtract that to 2024, you're going to come out with 188 years. So if we look at the history of the Miami-Dade Police Department, it was first known as Dade County Sheriff's Office, 1836 to 1957. In 1956, and it was in, acted in 1957, the voters of Florida, through a proposition that the county of Metropolitan Dade County, as it was called back then, asked for a special charter a special charter to run the county. And a little bit separate from the Constitution. It's home rule charter is what it's called. And uh, since people really didn't understand what was going on down there in that Banana Republic and the rest of Florida, they said, yeah, 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 just go away. And they granted that home rule charter. The sheriff's office would be still around, but hold on to your buckles, we're about to change things. So it becomes the Day County Public Safety Department in 1957 to 1981. 1981, they changed the name to the Metro Dade Police Department. Mm, getting fancy, aren't they? Remember, it was called Metropolitan Day County. So they called it Metro. Slick little name. Metro Day Police Department, 1981 to 1997. And then in 97, the commissioners and the mayor at the time, Alex Pinellas, asked for a change of name. And that became Miami Dade. County. Why? Because a lot of people around the country didn't know what the hell a Metro Dade or Metropolitan Dade was. So the county was changed to Miami Dade. And that's what the name of it is today. So from 1997 till today, it has been the Miami Dade Police Department. In January of 2025, it becomes the Miami Dade Sheriff's Office. What an evolution, huh? So why did they do it? Well, there were several attempts of doing this, and this took many decades to get it done. You see, there was a lot of noise running the, what I'd like to call the Civilian Eyes Law Enforcement Agency. Civilian Eyes because the ultimate authority, when they removed the sheriff's office, uh, would become a county manager. And then in 97, they created the strong mayor. And that would also be an outside influence. Currently, for you to understand, the mayor of Day County is the actual sheriff. That mayor gives the power to the director to do day-to-day -day operations. Not a good system, especially if your mayor's never put on a gun belt, never ran to a bathroom in a hurry, take that gun belt off, I'm talking real fast, doesn't know the ins and outs of a duty belt, kind of scary. Doesn't know what it means to go to work and risk their life each and every day. So as a result of that, it becomes very difficult. So the mayor just every so often butts their nosy nose where it don't belong in law enforcement. Well, a lot of people didn't like that system. 
and they would look at the rest of the state of Florida. 67 counties exist in Florida. 66 are doing it the right way. There's that one county that's known as a banana republic that refuses to conform. Florida legislators started pushing hard. I told you it took decades to get this done. There was a lot of attempts and it would fail. Attempt and it would fail. And some of it for stupid reasons. You know, like a representative that started yapping and got recorded saying the N-word. And then, well, that killed that bill. But eventually, it got up to Tallahassee, which is the state capital in Florida. And the committee approved it. And Dade County started to become worried. Of course, they played it off like, oh, it's not going to happen here. But it did. In 2018, it was placed on the ballot. And overwhelmingly, the people of Florida, you know, the ones that pay the bills, they said, no, wait a minute. I don't know what they're doing down there in that banana republic, but they should have everything that the other counties have, like a property appraiser, tax collector, and sheriff. What's this business about appointed? Well, the rest of the state doesn't do that. So obviously, the citizenry of Florida today was quite disgusted what they did in 1956 when they gave Miami on oh, Metropolitan Date at the time jurisdiction to have their own home rule charter, better known as the general guidebook to the banana republic. A lot of people will be insulted by what I'm saying. How dare you? But when you have people that are leading you in government that barely got voted in and it just it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. So here we are, the big push. And currently there's, uh, let's see, 5, 10, 15, about 17 people running in this sheriff's race. That's a lot of noise. Now, out of the people that are running, I've looked at their history. I'm not going to go into name-calling and personal yik-yaking because that's not what this podcast is about. Out of the 17 or so that are running, there's, in my opinion, five should be running. The other 12 or 11 I believe one dropped out. I don't even know. I don't even care. They're not up to speed to run the sheriff's office. Now, there's a couple of questions that I, a podcaster, former employee down there, worked for 27 years in law enforcement. I'm confused. See, now, if I go to a sheriff's office anywhere else in the state of Florida. I believe uh, Orange County, which is Orlando, you know where Mickey Mouse is at? It's the only exception. But all the others, and I might be wrong, there might be another one, they all have a whole package sheriff's office. What the hell is he talking about? They run the law enforcement aspect, which is patrol, investigation, you know, that kind of stuff. And the jail. Yeah, but you need a place to put the bad guys. What was the point of having the sheriff's office and no place to put them? But for some reason, this sheriff's office election is awfully quiet about the jail. And we're going to look at how much money's on the table. You know, you know what they say, right? Money talks, and uh, exactly. So 
So let's dive in a little bit more so you kind of understand what we're talking about here. Let's look at the law enforcement uh, terminologies first. That means we're going to talk about what is currently Miami-Dade Police Department that will become Miami-Dade Sheriff's Office. Now, they have 3,000 officers, law enforcement officers, 1,700 civilians. The population of Miami-Dade County is 2.7 million, and it is approximately 2,400 square miles. So it's pretty big. The police department is made up of 75% male, 24% female. <laughs> I can hear the liberals screaming through the speakers. 20% are white. White people are almost extinct in Miami, if you don't know. Hispanics on the force, 58%. There are a lot of Hispanics in Miami. That's why it's a banana republic. Blacks are 20% of the department and the others, you know, the others that nobody really knows, what the hell is he? I don't know, is 1.2%. So who's running? Well, out of the people that are running, what I can see right off the bat, two are females. One has zero experience, nothing, nothing, just Never cracked an egg, not a cop. No, I'm just running. So anyway, while she wastes everybody else's time, the other female in the race is currently an assistant director at Miami-Dade Police Department. So we'll take her serious because, you know, their numbers in females are very, very low. But strange enough, if I turn the page and I go into that jail, we're going to get there in a minute. The population of females is a lot larger. The numbers are totally different from the police side. What the hell is going on there? Anyway, let's continue. So if you look at the population, 2.7 million. When I went down there and I started working back in 1989, I believe the population was just short of a million. Hmm. Damn, that's a lot of New Yorkers coming down there. But they're there. Today, we have to look at who are these people that are running? Why are they running? Well, I told you that this took many decades to get off the floor. It had a hiccup here and there. There was a front runner a commissioner, and a good friend of mine. He was pushing for that sheriff's office. See, he's a cop himself. Then he became a Miami-Dade commissioner. And he had the vision to get politics out of law enforcement. And he pushed. And eventually, through the legislation, in Florida, it happened. As I said, the voters voted for it. And this friend, commissioner, he pushed and he was the guy. You know, you ever, you ever, you know somebody, whatever it is, the mechanic, he's the guy. The painter, he's the guy. Well, this guy was the guy. And he was going to get it. But there were some forces out there that didn't want him to get it. Long and short of it, this is not what this podcast is about. But he would get indicted and arrested and embarrassed because, God, is he going to have a whole lot of power? A lot of people in the Republic of Banana did not like that. His case, criminal case, is still pending. So I can't tell you innocent or guilty. My opinion and what I've heard, he's innocent because he wasn't a commissioner 
when some of these allegations occurred. But I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one. But once he got pushed out of the way, we had some strange visitors in Miami. One of them would come from Texas, originally from California, would briefly hit Austin, Texas. We said, what the hell does this have to do with Miami? Pay attention now. And then this individual would skip to Houston and then City of Miami. You see, some of our friends on the left have been looking real hard at this Miami-Dade Sheriff's position. But don't worry about that person I was talking about. Not even interested, I won't even mention his name. That person was removed, kicked out, fired by the city of Miami. He was an outsider and he's disappeared. But today, there's a lot of people running there was another front runner. When it was obvious after 2018 that they had to do this, whether they liked it or not, I told you there were some shenanigans with the current Miami-Dade commissioners. One of them actually came up with, we could create a small Miami-Dade Sheriff's Office. You know, that they could do like little, like warrants, you know, that kind of stuff misdemeanor stuff or something. We keep the police department. We can do that. This is how arrogant they are. And they were almost getting away with it. The Florida Sheriff's Association threatened them and said, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't reach into your pocket and take out that crayon. Don't do it. I'll shoot. And it got to a point that it got so serious that the Florida Sheriff's Association sued and won big time. They were basically hit over the head with the Constitution of Florida and told them to knock it off. But it didn't stop there. Representatives from Miami-Dade representing up in Tallahassee, Congress people, state congressmen, they made sure that on the ink of the law was felt in the rump of those that lead and run Miami-Dade. So now there's no question a constitutional officer in law enforcement is called a sheriff. He controls everything that is law enforcement, everything, even the property, period, and the subject. And all you civilians that never cracked an egg, don't have a badge, and never took off a gun belt in an emergency, can go away. <laughs> you thought it was that easy. Fools. Again, there's a second department in Miami-Dade law enforcement. See, there's not only one, there's two. Because in 1970, the Phyllis leaders at that time in the Miami Metropolitan Day County Commissioners decided to separate the departments. Jail over here, patrol, law enforcement over there. Why? Nobody knows. Nobody cares. But they did it. But they both agencies have the same badge, same exact badge, which is strange. And before we end here, I'm going to show you that badge. And when they separated both departments in 1970, the commissioner said that both shields and badges should be the same to resemble that they were once united, but their budgets would be separate. And boy, are they separate and apart. And the personnel, totally different. Don't know how the hell that happened. But anyway, let's take a look at this imaginary department. And does that mean anything? So if we dive into 
the let me go back to my my Google Ale here so I could get the information straight up. The Miami-Dade Corrections Department would at one time ran seven jails. Today it runs three. Kind of strange, isn't it? They used to have a population. In other words, they would book 125,000 prisoners a year. Today, nothing close to it. Nothing. Maybe 40, 60, 80 on a good year. Where did it all go? Where did all these people go? Population went up. So figure this out. 1989, the population of Miami-Dade, Metropolitan Dade, is short of a million. And the jail was booking about 120, 125,000 people a year. That's a lot of folks. Today, 2.7 million. And if we can muster up 60, that's a good year. The sworn staff is quadrupled. The budget, astronomical. Uh, the budget... 1989, I don't remember offhand, but let's just say less than 100 million today. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Let's not even get into that. So let's look at what that agency has. They have 2,225 sworn officers. The law enforcement people have 3,000. Close close, but no cigar. They have 860 civilian personnel. The other entity has 1,700. The missing link agency that is nowhere in this election has a $482 million budget. The race for the sheriffs, the police side, well, that budget is $927 million. Combined, $1.4 billion. Did I got your attention? Yeah. Uh-huh. So, who's running? Should it be a politician? Should we have Joe Biden running for the sheriff's office in Miami-Dade? Who should run the agency. Now, the same pickle exists in the FBI. Now, because I mentioned those letters, I'll probably get followed. But anyway, they usually put, as a director of the FBI, a lawyer. Not a cop. A lawyer. You know, lawyer, lawyers. But who should be the guy in charge? Now, out of the 17 or so that are running, and we're not going to get into personalities because that wouldn't be fair, would it? Because there'd be 16 of them crying and depressed if I went into personalities. But one of them was a cop and he's a lawyer. That doesn't uh, you know, cut the mustard there. One used to be a union boss. I know him very well, but no, uh, this doesn't work. And then we have the lady that, that she doesn't even know what a cop is, but she's, you know, a soccer mom, older, you know, kids are grown out of the nest. I got a shit to do, so I'm going to run. And uh, a couple other people that were in law enforcement and had uh, somewhat a position and they think that they can do this. And then you got, as I said, in my opinion, from the 17, five really belong in the race. But if we break it down, one, two, 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 three, three, four are Democrats. The rest are all Republican. Now, let's talk about a Democratic friend, shall we? Now, currently, the mayor of Miami-Dade County is known as a Democrat. I'm trying to 
be very professional. So that mayor has been known to stick her little nose where it doesn't belong in the law enforcement circles by ordering that certain people be released from custody immediately, if not sooner. So, strangely enough, that mayor that knows zero about law enforcement never took off a gun belt in an emergency in a bathroom, has hired about a year and a half ago, two years ago, somebody, nobody really knows who he is, kind of strange, in the neighboring county of Broward, their sheriff's office, which, by the way, has been a complete mess for years, years. But anyway... So this person comes down with the rank of colonel. There's all that in a bag of chips up there in Broward. And they got a colonel. And they bring this colonel in to run the jail system because that's what he used to do up in Broward. And then all of a sudden, the mayor had picked somebody else, you know, the wink and nod. They used to be the director of Miami-Dade Police Department. Once you run, you can do this. Remember, somebody's got to pull the strings. The, got the puppeteer, got the puppet. We're ready to go. So that person says, okay, I'll do it. Changes party affiliations and becomes very strange. And a lot of people start saying, you're not the same guy. What's wrong with you? Something wrong with you? Nobody understands. Unfortunately, mental illness is real. And I'm glad he's alive. That's all I'll say about that. I'm not going to make fun of that. But pressure is real. Especially when you're dealing with so much money, so many people, and real issues. And I'm not saying that whatever happened to him was as a result of this race, but I'm sure that, that had something to do with the pressure he was feeling. And he was removed from the race because of his attempt of trying to cause harm, self-injurious behavior. And now we have to find somebody else. And then the mayor looked and she looked across the hall and she said, oh crap, the guy I got from Broward that nobody knows, well, get him. That's it. Now, I'm not saying he's not a bad guy. So I don't know. But, hmm, you're not running a smaller county than Broward. You're running a bigger one. A lot more power. You got him to be on the top of your game. Not Muela. You know what Muela is? Molos. Molos. Cubans call it Muela. That means you're a good talker. That's not what people are looking for, a good talker. What they're looking for is results. And if you have, and if you produce results, then you're good. So let's go back and round this up. As I said, out of the 17, five are probably good. You know, there's a former commissioner from the city of Miami, part-time trooper, used to do the television spots. I'm good, I could be sheriff. That, that kind of thing, you know. Another guy that was regular patrol officer for about three cups of coffee. And yeah, right here, buddy. So do your due diligence, find out who knows. This is serious. It's a $900 million operation. My understanding that this is being done in parts take over the patrol first and then they'll take over the jail later. I think that's a mistake because I actually believe there's gonna be a lot of underhand operation because that 400 and 
87 million, I believe I said. 482 million dollar budget. That's a lot of money for what? Seven jails, 100 million. Three jails, 482 million. I'm confused. But don't you worry, because when you're down in the Banana Republic, mathematics don't work like everybody else's mathematics. Two plus two may not equal four. And here is a great example. So there's a lot of noise in this election. A lot of people say they can run the police department. What else comes with the police department? Anything else? How about the jail? Where, where are we putting the bad guys? Hello? Question right here. Where are we putting them? And how long is the corruption going to continue? There's a lot of corruption here. And I'm not going to mention names or know what I, what I found out, what I know. Because I wouldn't be a nice guy then. People would say, I don't like them anymore. But it's up to you if you live in Miami-Dade. And if you don't live in Miami-Dade and your career crossed the, the pond into California, better known as Disney World, you also have a responsibility of due diligence. I remember the Los Angeles Sheriff's Office, there was, a, and I, I don't remember his name, so I apologize, but it was your last sheriff in Los Angeles. He was a Democrat. And I had, I had my eye on him. I said, let me take a closer look at this guy. But I liked him at the end because he stood up to the wokeness crap. His payment, they kicked him in the pants and got rid of him and brought another nut in. The due diligence, every vote counts, is important. You want to save your community, your county, your state, and your country, you've got to do away with wokeness. You've got to do away with socialism. You've got to do away with communism. I came, I was born in America, I was born in New York City of Cuban parents. They fled Cuba and they fled Fidel Castro. He never said he was a communist. He never even said he was a socialist. All that shit came out later in, in the wash. When he found out how the hell we're we gonna get money. Yeah, we're we'll getting from the Russians. See, Fidel was not a communist. Fidel was a federalista. It's about him. But today, over 60 something years later, people are still eating out of garbage cans. If you're looking to have a meal at the garbage can, Keep on voting, D. It's not gonna go well for you. That election, the primary for Miami-Dade Sheriff is in August. After that, sometime in September, we're gonna have another podcast on it. Because you see, the 17 will be gone, it'll be down to two. I have a funny feeling that one of the two it's going to be that strange guy up in Broward that nobody really knows who the hell he is. He used to run the jail, they said. So he knows Squadoodle about the street? I guess. But anyway, it doesn't matter. $21.4 billion. What the hell are you worried about? Right? I bet you he's going to be one of the two. But I'm hoping that the second one is the guy that's going to save... Miami Dade. Up next, you know, we always got good shows, and we're not only going to stay on the law enforcement aspect, calorie deficit. What the, f how the hell did I get here? Calorie deficit, episode 312, part of wellness with Eminem. 
we're going to talk about fasting, calorie deficit, and how that can prevent you from getting cancer. Revolutionary, isn't it? So, if you're looking for a good gunsmith, I know who he is. Pistol Pete, the gunsmith down in Miami. His information is down at the bottom of the show notes. He'll make your gun look like new. Best best. Like this, look. This is one of my duty gun. My duty gun's in the safe. But the he created my duty gun. Same gun. Put over fifty thousand rounds for that bad boy. So Glock also. And um, Pete was the gunsmith. So um, that's why I'm referring you to him. Give Pistol Pete a call. He'll tell you how you can send him your gun if you don't live in Miami legally. Nobody gets in trouble by the ATF, better known as the Masquerading Law Enforcement Agency. And you can have that gun right back to the specifications that you wanted. Also, if you're in the New Jersey area and you're looking for a concealed weapons permit, that's right, folks. New Jersey just woke up and they just created CCW for its citizens. Well, our guy, Kilo Sierra, is giving out those classes, working like a dog, getting those people certified. An NRA instructor and coach of over 20 years, the the training doesn't get any better than that. His information is also down on the bottom of the show notes. And if you're in South Florida, especially in the Miami area, triple A, that's three A's, gunsafety.com with a model. He'll hook you up. He's got classes coming on. And Tampa Bay area, that's us, RaiderCopTacTAC.com. As always, Continue to pray for yourself because without you, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your community, the law enforcement agencies that serve you. And most importantly, continue to pray for the United States of America. Salfa Mike, I'll see you downrange.